Hello everybody. Let's continue the discussion regarding the point set topology of the real line. Okay. And in this video, we're gonna discuss a little about open sets. Okay. What do you mean by open sets? <clears throat> so to begin with open sets, let's define an open set first. Let's see. Uh, let us take U to be some subset of R. It can be the empty set or R itself. Okay, let U belong to sorry, U U be a subset of R. We say that. We say that U is open in R. Open in R. If for every this is the definition for every x belonging to u there exists some there exists some r greater than zero such so that <coughs> b x r is a subset of u so basically uh, what it means, we can write this in quantified form as that is for all x belonging to u there exists r greater than 0 such that b x r is a subset of u. Alright, we can write it like this as well. Now what does this mean? This means that if this is the real line and if x is some element, okay, x is any element in the set u, okay, in the set u, then we can find an open ball, we can find an open ball containing x, or to be more precise with x as a center, so we can find a ball x minus r, x plus r, something like this which is totally contained in the given set u. Let's represent the given set u as like this, okay? Then this interval is totally inside the set u, okay? Now this is not the, obviously u is going to be a part of this real line. It's definitely not gonna be this big blob of whatever, okay? This is just a mere notational device all right okay nothing to be taken geometrically for this big blob I made over here all right that's what it means basically this is the definition of an open set in open set in R okay all right so let's get away with some uh, <coughs> basic properties for example, uh, let's call this theorem, all right, theorem, let's call this a theorem, a very minor, a, minor, uh, a very small, yet very, very uh, important theorem. The set, the sets, or should I say, something like this in R, the empty set and R are open sets, okay, are open sets, okay, so basically phi is an open set and R is an open set. Let's prove this. The first part will be the proof of <coughs> the proof of the fact that phi is an open set in R. All right. Now to prove this thing, we're going to use vacuous implication. All right, we're going to use vacuous implication. 
So basically, now let's look at this statement here. Now you can prove it using this compact form of a nested quantified statement if you can find some x belonging to u. But we cannot find x belonging to phi over here. So let's take a little more precise form of this quantified statement. What does this mean? This can be written as to show phi is open in R, open in R. What do we need to show? We must prove that we must prove that for all x belonging to phi, there exists r greater than 0 such that the open ball centered at x with radius r is totally contained in phi. This is what we are supposed to prove. Now, what does this actually mean? That is, we can write it as for all x belonging to r, okay, we'll choose any x belonging to R because R is the context of discussion, the universal discourse or the universal set. All right. If we want to write this in an implication form, okay, if we want to write this in an implication form, we must take X to be an arbitrary element of the universal set. And in this case, in real analysis, the universal set is always the real set of real numbers. All right. So, if we want to write this as an implication, we've taken any element of R and we used to have, we, we had uh, X belonging to phi over here, okay? So in the form of an implication, this will look something like this, okay? Now you can write this as an, this in the form of, uh, this in a more precise form, but I don't need it right now, all right? don't really need it. Bxr is a subset of phi. All right. So this is what we are supposed to prove. This statement basically refers to this statement. This is the more compact form. All right. This is the more compact form. This is a much better form of this statement, even though in other proofs, we're going to see that this form of the quantified statement will be sufficient for for constructing a proof okay all right so we need to show that this implicate this this thing this statement is true all right so let us choose so this basically means let us choose any x belonging to r any x belonging to r or suppose let's say any x belonging to R which is also in phi if there was some other set it would mean any x belonging to R that is inside of that set the set that if it was something like this if it was something like this this would mean that x belongs to R let us choose any x belonging to R which is also in the set A all right so Since this is empty, let us choose any x belonging to R and, <clears throat> okay, let us choose any x belonging to R, okay, we've chosen any x belonging to R. Or if it was something like this, also then we would choose any x belonging to R and to prove this statement to be true and to prove this implication to be true, we would have assume that x would belong to a now that's what we are going to do all right we're going to assume that this is we're going to we would have assumed that this thing is true and proven that this thing is true okay but in our case but in our case is that even possible no then x belonging to phi is always false always false so basically 
let's see. Um, we had to prove this statement. So for this part, we've chosen any x belonging to R. And in order to prove this statement, we must have chosen, we must have assumed that x belonging to phi is true. But is that even possible? No. It's always false. x belonging to phi is always false. So basically, what we have is, if we have p implication q, okay, p implication q, it doesn't matter if this is true or false. If this statement is false, this statement is false, then p implies q is always true, okay? This will be true, it will be always true if we know that p is false. That is what we know as vacuous implication. So we're going to use vacuous implication. Now let's see. Statement P refers to this statement x belongs to phi. And statement Q refers to this statement. All right. Statement Q refers to this statement. So basically what we're going to say is that since this part of the, what do you call it? Uh, antecedent. Okay. Antecedent is false this will be true this entire statement will be true okay is then x belonging to phi is always false so by vacuous implication so by vacuous implication 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 This statement is true as a result of which this statement is true. Star is true. So, so, um, so phi is open in R. All right. That's what we are going to say. All right. Now, to prove that, uh, this is the proof for uh, phi being an open set, all right? This is the proof for phi being an open set. Now let's see, uh, for the second part, I'm gonna adjust this, and I'm recording a video, I'm not in a class. R is an open set in R, okay? R is an open set in R, to show that R is an open set in R, R is an open set in R, we must prove that this holds, this holds, okay, this holds, we must prove this statement, okay, now in order to prove this statement, what we can do is that for all x there exists, y says that, whatever. All right. In order to prove this kind of a statement, what we need to do is that we need to choose any arbitrary x as prescribed. As long as this is not an empty set, we can choose x to be an arbitrary element satisfying a certain condition. As long as it's not a contradiction as in the previous case. All right. And then we define y as some constant okay as some constant or at least or at most or it can be a constant at least in the uh, it may or it can be okay by constant I mean in the real case it's a constant otherwise it's either independent of any other variable term or whatever you call it of independent of anything else anything else okay whatever that shall mean or it depends totally on x only x only okay so we can define y we can define y in any manner we want 
as long as this works okay as long as this works if it doesn't work we're gonna use another one all right as long as this thing works but in order to define why what we need to be what we need to know is that it should be either chosen the value of y should be chosen independently or or and in this case independent of anything else means in the case of real numbers it's a constant simply a constant and at worst it must depend on the value of x as prescribed by the statement so in this statement to prove this statement now r is not an op uh, uh, an empty set so what we are going to do is let x belong to r be any arbitrary element of r be arbitrary all right be arbitrary now after choosing some x some arbitrary x okay any arbitrary x as prescribed by this condition what we need to do next is that we need to define r all right define r greater to be 0 by r equals something okay something and in this proof at least we can take r to be a constant because it will follow by the definition of an open ball as you shall see okay all right as you can see a little bit later on as you will see a little bit later on all right we must choose x as an arbitrary element satisfying the prescribed condition which we have done already right now we're already here and then we need to define r now this r the value of r should either be a constant totally independent of anything else or at worst it should depend on x all right so the definition of r can either be a constant now this place can be taken up by a constant or by something which involves only and only x all right you cannot use any other symbol if there are any it's a different thing that there are there aren't any other symbols but in the definition of a limit you will see that uh, there will be other symbols involved you'll get an epsilon here a delta over here and some x's over here so basically in that definition you're going to see what will happen what you should do and what you should not do but uh, all right here we cannot define r as something that depends on anything else than x okay so let's see uh, let's try to define it as a constant as a positive constant let's say r equals one if this works then it's fine the proof is complete if it doesn't work we will see all right let's define i r greater than zero by r equal to one now after now we have to take any x so we've taken any x we needed to define r greater than zero at worst by showing by using x or you can choose a constant I'm going to choose a constant for now all right and after choosing the constant we can get away with anything over here as long as it is r greater than zero as long as the value of r is greater than zero but after this we won't be able to get away with we may or may not be able to get away with the with our definition of r because after choosing r we must prove this condition now in order to prove this condition let's see now uh, b x r will be equal to b x 1 all right which as we have discussed in the previous video is the open interval 
x minus 1, x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 1, okay, x minus 1, x plus 1. So, by definition, now you can use the definition over here, we have defined a ball to be a subset of the real line, so basically, you can get away with any or greater than 0 over here, but it may not be the case in every other set, all right? Okay, bxr, bx1, this is a subset of r. So, we've proven this part as well. Okay, we've, cho we've proven this part as well. So, what we can say is that, so, look at, let's look at the proof, okay? To prove this statement, what we need to do, we need to choose any x belonging to r, then we need to define r greater than 0 as something which is a constant or whose value depends only on x and then after doing all that we need to show that this statement should this statement holds which we have done so the proof of this statement is complete over here all right the proof of this statement is complete over here so we can say so r is open in r all right so this completes the proof of uh, the first theorem we have discussed in this in this uh, topic under this topic the point set topology of r now let me just clear out the board a little bit so that i can uh, prove some other theorems as well okay some other theorems basically two more theorems in this video all right it's going to take me a little bit of time because i'm going to discuss it a little more slowly than i would in an actual classroom all right okay let me just clear out the board a little all right this theorem ah this theorem this is one of the properties okay we've shown that phi and r are open that's one of the properties and this is one of the one of the others that was the the previous theorem we've discussed is the first property and this is the second property and we're going to do one more theorem after this and that will be the third property which will be used in order to define what is known as a topological space okay what is known as a topological space now topological spaces are usually a higher undergraduate or a graduate course in many most of the universities around the world so i won't be covering that in these videos but just to aware make you aware about things i'm i'm, I'm just gonna i was just saying that all right okay any union any arbitrary union it can be a finite union it can be a countable union or it can be an uncountable union okay whatever kind of a union you choose which involves open sets will always be open this is what this theorem says all right any union of open sets is open so basically what we need is a collection of open sets now by open sets means open sets in r okay and is open means is open in r all right that's the obvious uh, that's the obvious omission in these kind of statements as long as we're discussing uh, what do you call it? Uh, points of topology on R. Okay, now any open sets. So what we are going to do is that let F be any collection by collection. I don't really mean sets, but uh, a collection, any collection, by collection, I don't mean sets, okay? <coughs> okay, <laughs> now I'm fine. Let F be a collection of open sets, of open sets. In R, all right. 
or you can simply say open sets. You can omit this part from the. Hey, what are you doing? Don't do that. Any collection of open sets. Now, in this collection, the sets may or may not be distinct. Okay, so let's quickly. Uh, convert this into an indexed set okay which can be indexed as which can be indexed as indexed as something like this where this I think it's capital lambda okay, where lambda is some index set, some appropriate index set, okay? Appropriate index set, all right? Now, so since the collection is not necessarily a distinct collection, U alpha, U beta may not mean alpha equal to beta. All right. Two different indi indices might give uh, the same open set in this collection. Okay. Now what happens? Let's see. If all u alpha are open, if all of them are, uh, sorry, are uh, empty, are empty that is u alpha equals to phi for all alpha in the index set then what can we say then we needed to show that the union of these sets to be an open set isn't it so in this case, we had to show that union of is open, all right, is open, all right, we needed to show that this is open. So in this case, in the first case, if all of these sets are empty, then what we can say is that this union will be equal to phi and phi is an open set. And phi is an open set, isn't it? Open set. So in this case, so in this case, what we can say is that union something like this is open. So this is what we are supposed to prove. And we have proven this for at least one of the possible cases. Now, if u alpha equal to r for some alpha naught in the index set then what we can say is that now if one of the sets is the universal set itself then this union will be equal to the universal set that's one of the properties of the union all right so We'll get this and we've shown that R is an open set. Thus in this case also, thus in this case, in this case, U alpha is open because this is equal to R and R is open. All right. So we are left with uh, one more case and a dry marker. So let me just fill this up a little bit and we shall return. All right. So um, what we are supposed to do now is consider the remaining case, the final case. We've considered to be, we've considered every set in the collection to be empty all right so let the collection have some empty set but not all empty 
at the collection u alpha b such that uh, such that so for all alpha u alpha equal to 5 we've considered this case isn't it we've considered this case already so such that there exists now for all negation of for all is there exists isn't it for all x p x means there exists x says that not p x this is the negation of this statement all right for all x p x can be negated as something like this so to negate this statement we're going to say there exists uh, what do you call some alpha naught belonging to or we can simply use alpha it doesn't even matter all right the symbol doesn't even matter says so that u alpha is not equal to phi so the collection is not totally empty all right and what else can we say is that for some means there exists alpha now to negate this thing okay negate this thing there exists some alpha naught belonging to there for which uh, u alpha naught is equal to r so for some means for all now just change the symbol it doesn't matter you can use alpha here and alpha naught over here it doesn't even matter okay i'm just this is just a dummy symbol for all this we have u alpha to be not equal to r to be not equal to r okay so not all the sets are empty okay so not all the sets are empty and none of them are equal to r so we cannot have this to be empty okay and we cannot have oh god so, so because basically uh since one of the sets is non-empty the union cannot be empty and since one of the sets is uh since none of the sets are r okay they must be proper subset of R. So this is a proper subset of R, which means this set is not equal to R. That's what it basically means. Okay, that's what it basically means. Now, to prove that, to prove that, what we need to prove now, we've proven that this is open in this case and this case. So we need to show, we need to prove we need to show that show that union of u alpha is open okay this is open so basically what we need to do is that that is what we need to do is that to show that this is open by definition we must be able to show that uh, Oh we must be able to show that we must be able to show that I'm continuing from here okay for all x belonging to the union of these sets there exists some r greater than zero such that b x r is a subset of what do you call it uh this set okay now just like in the previous case let me clear it out a little more okay let me clear it out a little more now just like in the previous case in order to prove this statement what we need to do is that 
we need to take an x belonging to this this union any x belonging to this union arbitrary arbitrary okay now we need to define some r definitely we need to define some r we can do that at anywhere in the proof okay so basically we've taken x belonging to something like this now let's see what happens okay let's see what happens now since x belongs to u alpha the x belonging to this is arbitrary okay now we need to define some r okay we need to define some r definitely we are going to define some r definitely we are going to define some r <coughs> and it must depend at worst it must depend on x only okay it must depend on x only but the process is not as straightforward as before so we can define r whenever we want but after we do that we must show that this works okay we must show that this works so let's see x belonging to this is arbitrary now before defining some r since we've taken x belonging to the union what we can see is that from the properties of the union then what we can say is that before defining r we're not defining r just yet we will define it okay then what we can say is that there exists alpha not belonging to the index that says that x belongs to u alpha not why is this because this union is a non empty union okay when there exists alpha not belonging to some okay something like this now since x belongs to this set and we know that this collection this collection was a collection of empty sets okay sorry the collection of open sets we can say that let's see uh, as u alpha not is an open set open set now what do we have open set x belonging to u if u is some open set then if x belongs to u then there exists r greater than 0 such that v x r is a subset of u okay now what do we have for every x belonging to u so basically for this x belonging to u alpha naught since this is an open set okay since okay let's say uh, let's change the symbols a little bit just to make no confusions around here all right for all y belonging to u there exists r greater than zero such that this holds so basically this statement means that since u alpha naught is an open set okay for every y belonging to u alpha naught there must exist r greater than zero which which will depend only on y for our choice of y says that this will hold so basically our choice of y is x okay our choice of y is x so corresponding to this x okay then there exists r greater than zero so for every y greater than zero we can choose an r so in particular for x belonging to u x alpha naught okay u x alpha naught sorry u alpha naught in particular for x belonging to this set we can choose some r greater than zero which depends totally on the particular value of x 
depending only on x only on x or a constant or a constant I'm gonna do the other theorem in the next video all right or a constant all right or a constant depending only on x or a constant such that such that such that b x r b x r is a subset of u alpha naught basically i'm using the definition i'm not proving the definition in order to prove we must take something like this i'm not proving this state this kind of a statement for u alpha naught i'm using that kind of a statement so in order to use that kind of a what does that statement what does that statement allow us to use that's a different thing proving that statement is a different thing all right okay. u alpha naught is an open set depending on okay so is that this works now let's see we do not need to define r uh, separately we have taken in order to prove this statement we have taken an arbitrary element and we have already found r greater than zero says that it depends only on x or a constant now the whatever that's in the middle we're not concerned with that we can do anything valid in between them in between these two point parts of the proof okay we can do any valid deductions which we have done we don't care now we don't care how we defined this r it only matters that if it only matters if this is a valid definition or not this is a valid choice for r this is a valid definition for r so for every uh, x belonging to this union we found some r greater than zero already now what we need to do is that we need to show this Now what we need to show is that we need to show that this statement holds. Now, let's see. Bxr is already a subset of u alpha naught, and since u alpha naught is, since u alpha naught is one of the, uh, since u alpha naught is one of the sets in the collection u alpha this will be subset of this union okay so basically let me just take care of my dog man he's irritating me all right he was eating some kind of he's eating his own hair basically okay so where was i okay Yeah. So let's see. Uh, to prove this statement, what we have, what we were supposed to show is that what we are supposed to do is that to prove this statement, we were supposed to take some x belonging to the union. Okay. Then we were supposed to find some r or define a positive r, which depended, which was either a constant or depend depended only on our choice of x okay which we did by using something that was valid already all right and then what we were supposed to show is that for this r for this choice of r this statement holds and we've shown that this statement holds using this condition so basically we've proven this statement and what we can say is now that the union so union of is an open set in R open set in R this is what we can say all right so basically I'm not going to do that finite intersection part in this video I'm already talking for uh, 45 minutes now okay uh, what we can say is that 
To prove this statement, we, sh we must have chosen some arbitrary x belonging to uh, u alpha. Then, by any valid means, we should have obtained some r greater than 0, which depended only on x or was a constant. Okay? Then, after choosing r, we must have shown that this statement will hold. So basically what we did is that we chose an x and before defining r we made some before choosing some value of r we made some deductions using this property all right using this property so basically we found some u alpha naught in the collection of open sets and since u alpha naught is an open set and we had x belonging to u alpha naught okay since we had x belonging to u alpha naught by the definition of open sets we must have found some r greater than zero which depended only on x or a constant such that this condition holds so basically we are use, using this kind of a statement there exists r greater than zero B Y R. So, particularly, what does this mean is that if we choose Y, if we make a choice, a particular choice like this, then we must be able to choose some. Uh, now, to use, we are using using this statement. Okay, we are using, not proving this. To use this statement, what does this statement mean is that. Uh, for any x belonging to u alpha naught, sorry, if we choose a particular value of y, which happened to be x over here, we can define some r, we can define some r, which depended only on x or was a constant, such that this condition for the particular value of r, sorry, for particular value of y will hold, okay? We are using this statement and by using this statement we've obtained this. So what we have done is that we've obtained, we've taken any x belonging to the union, okay, then we've obtained r greater than zero. It's a different thing that we do not need to define it explicitly. We've already obtained r greater than zero. We only needed to obtain r greater than zero. We, it could have been Explicitly, explicitly defined in terms of x or a constant or simply we must have known or at least we must have known that this r greater than 0 depends only on x or was a constant okay which happened this part is complete now to prove this part we're going to take the help of this part so basically this part we've copied it here and since this is a this is one of the sets in this collection this is a subset of the union so basically we've done this over here we've done this over here we could have opted R in some other way okay if you want you can try I'm gonna opt in R like this okay we, I'm not gonna define it explicitly it doesn't matter if you define it explicitly or not it, what you should know is that that R greater than 0 the choice of R greater than 0 which can be deduced by any other valid means. Now, this is the valid mean of, the, of obtaining this R, okay? And we, what we need to know is that this depends only on X or is a constant. That's all we need to know, okay? It's not necessary that you need to de define this explicitly every single time, no. It's not necessary. Such that, now to prove this part, to prove this part, I'm using this part. Okay, so this basically works, which means, and this is a union as I've already told you. So basically, I've proven this statement for all, there exists, and the statement. All right, you can use any valid method to obtain R. Once again, I'm repeating, you can use any valid method to obtain R greater than zero. All right, okay, now there's another theorem which states that now the first theorem phi and r are open in x sorry open in r basically that's the first statement in the definition of a 
topological space the cor corresponding definition in the topological space one of the that's the first axiom of <coughs> defining for defining the definition of uh, uh, what you call topological space the corresponding statement of this theorem is this second statement of that definition okay and the third one which I'm not going to discuss in this video I'll discuss this in some other video in the next video in the next subsequent video I'll discuss that and and that will be the third condition to define the third condition or the third axiom for the in the definition of a topological space okay all right uh, I think I've done quite an explanation this usually doesn't go this long inside a classroom all right my dog even happened to swallow his own hair whatever uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope I'm making things clear I'm making analysis interesting okay all that I've assumed is that you've already taken up a course in set theory logic techniques of proof and all that's all I've assumed if you have not taken it taken those kind of courses it is highly suggested that you take those courses first you study those topics first and then study analysis okay those topics from the basic the basis of entire mathematics so that's tremendously essential that you know all those topics properly and yeah that's all thank you very much